This is what you all have been waiting for, the 7000 series with 3D Cache. We just acquired the 7950X 3D. I wish I did. Fortunately, my order of the 7950X was not fulfilled, even though I purchased it. So I had to quickly go and buy the 7900X 3D. And we also got the DDR5 and a new motherboard. Let's put everything into the system and see how it performs. Will this be the CPU that even dominates a fully tuned 3900K? This review is fully unbiased and is fully funded by myself currently. You can support my channel by either subscribing or using the affiliate links below. So we can get more hardware like this and show you the true performance when your system is fully tuned so you can make better purchasing decisions and get more value for your money. And as always, you can find all the specs and the hardware that's been used in this video in the description below. And as always, we begin with the lower run to get the results Results, we are doing five runs to get the average FPS because Star Citizen is an online multiplayer game with a lot of variables. And if you want to copy the lower run yourself, just pay attention as I'm going through it now. There's always examples of how to do the lower run yourself in every one of my videos. So if you have any questions, then just check them out as well. And as always, we need to make sure we're running the settings at very high, both on the graphic settings and all the other settings, including very high clouds to ensure that we're pushing the CPU to the fullest. We are running at 1080p as well to make sure we are not GPU bound. And if in doubt, all the settings is in the description below. Looking at the results at what we call plug and play settings which is 6000 megahertz seal 32 now obviously to get this you need to have a ram stick that has that frequency this is a very common frequency for most 6000 megahertz ram kits there is one slower version which has seal 40 but this is the mid-range version that most people are buying so it's a very good representation of what performance most of you guys will be getting if you enable expo in the bias we are looking at a 94 average fps and one percent lows being 50 fps and for those who don't know the 7000 series 3 cache comes with the vcache scheduler which prioritizes which chiplet should be running the program and it tries to prioritize games only to use the vcache chip however star citizen the vcache scheduler is prioritizing both chiplets so is running on all the 12 cores here this is because star citizen scales with multiple cores so it's probably telling the vcache scheduler that it wants all those 12 cores so i had to obviously test it out for myself to see what would the performance be if we disable one of the chiplets that did not have the vcache and here's the result we're looking at a six percent better performance on the average meanwhile the one percent lows are within margin of error if you're watching my channel it's because you don't just want to see the standard plug and play settings you would get by running these components you want to find out how fast and how far can you push your system now with the 7000 x3d i was able to get the memory clock up to 6400 100 megahertz and tighten the timings down to 30 cl this resulted in the latency of the memory going down from 17 nanoseconds all the way down to 57 nanoseconds you might notice a lower read and copy result this is because we disabled one of the chiplets additional tuning was done to ensure that we could lock the cpu frequency at 5.15 gigahertz as a result we increased the one percent low by 10 percent we're now sitting at 56 1% low. The average was increased roughly by 5% as well. Now let's compare the results to the other CPUs we have tuned in the past. All right, the results are very impressive. The 7900X3D that is tuned wins over the 3900K that is tuned as well. The 1% lows are within margins of error, but the average is roughly 6% above the 3900K that is tuned. Now, mind you, this is running only with six cores I want you to let that sink in. This is not an eight core system we are looking at. It is running on six cores, destroying the 3900K that has eight cores and is fully tuned. I can only imagine how much more performance the 7950X3D will have or the 7800X3D. From our previous Star Citizen CPU core scaling video, we can expect another 10 to 15% higher performance if we enable an additional two cores with hyperthreading slash SMT. I can just imagine straight out of the box, we should probably be looking at 120 FPS and roughly 65 potentially on the 1% lows if I had the eight core CPU to test out and if it was fully tuned. That's within the range of what I was predicting in my previous video video. 
Now we do also know why AMD did not pre-advertise the 7900X3D's performance. It is just a CPU that is missing some of its core performance due to the lack of having the 3D cache on an 8-core chiplet. The 7900X3D is good, but take a look how impressive the 5800X3D is when it's tuned. Now, as a reminder, if you saw the previous video, this tuning results of reaching 3800 MHz can be achieved by 95% of you guys out there who has Samsung B die or even other common memory sticks. Some of you will even be able to achieve 4000 MHz, CL16 or CL15 or even in some cases CL14. That means you get an additional 15% on top of these results. So ask yourself, have you tuned your system? Because your 5800X3D could be as powerful as a 7000 900X3D out of the box. Looking at the GPU utilization, we can see that there's still more performance to be gained both from this 3900K, which is in blue, and this 7900X3D, which is in green. However, interestingly enough, if we look at the power consumption, the 3900K, which is in red, is consuming a significantly more power than the 7900X3D. It's consuming, on an average, 60 watts throughout the benefit Mark. Meanwhile, the 3900K is consuming roughly 120 watts and 130 watts at any given time. The 7900XD is consuming roughly half the power in comparison to 3900K. What this means for you as a PC builder is that you can run the 7900XD with a less powerful water cooler or a less powerful air cooler. If we now take a look at the actual GPU temperature, we're looking at the GPU temperature hovering around 62 degrees through throughout the benchmark. Meanwhile, the 3900K was running roughly around 70 to 80 Celsius using the same 360 all-in-one water cooler from EK. Now let's continue with our benchmarking results. Taking a look at area 18, which is a planet without any clouds, we're actually seeing the 7900X2D that is tuned, just completely winning once again with 12% higher performance in the average. The 1% lows are within margin of error comparing the 3900K. Once again, I have to remind myself, we are looking at a 6-core 7000 series with 3D cache. This is not an 8-core chiplet, which means we should at least expect as a minimum 10% both in 1% lows and on the average. It's a win here for AMD. Moving to Orison, we're seeing very similar results both on the 3900K and the 7900X3 that are both tuned. Now, mind you, as a reminder again, this is a 6-core wow. CPU, so by adding another 10%, it is by all means a big win for AMD again here with their new 7000 series with 3D cache. I can't wait to get my hands on the 7800X3D. For those who watched my previous video on the 5800X3D, you will remember that there's something magical and special about the AMD CPUs with 3D cache, and that is it has way higher highs. Now let's take a look at the results when we include the average high 5%. In Lorville, the 7900X3D is 13% faster for its 5% top FPS. Now to clarify what this really means is that this is a recorded average of the top frames that was recorded 5% of the time. Now to put it into perspective, check out the video of the lower run I was doing and just check how high certain frames are. That means in these areas where I see 150 FPS, the 3900K sees roughly 133 FPS and it's very very noticeable and this becomes even more pronounced and noticeable when you're in areas that are not cities. I'm talking about space. So what that means is that in space the 7900X3 is way way faster. Uh, I haven't done any specific benchmark my recordings for that, but I can guarantee you on the quick things I've saw wow moments where the FPS is far beyond higher than I've seen before on any of these CPUs. And as you can see, this becomes more pronounced in area 18 where there are no clouds. And this is where we see the extra cache in action and due to the higher clock speed of the 7900X3D versus the previous generation, now we can see an amazingly 24% higher performance wow. against the 3900K in the top 5% of frames. As a reminder, we're still talking about the 6-core CPU. Now what this really means is that in space, once again, you will see 24% higher FPS in space and in other areas where there are not many entities 
needs to be rendered. The 7900XD would just blow Intel out of the water. And the thing that stood out to me was quantum travel, even though I haven't benchmarked all the CPUs under that condition, I saw FPS in the 280s. I think the highest I've seen is 240 on an Intel system. The 7900XD just produced a much higher FPS when you're not in places like the cities. And this is where the CPU shines the most. So I'll actually use the 1% highs as a reference of how much better the 7900X3D is against the Intel system. So we're talking about 13 to 25% better in areas that are not in the city. And finally, in Orison, the average max FPS is 17% faster than the Intel system. And as a reminder, and I will keep on reminding you, this is a six core CPU running at half the wattage than the 3900K. It's a win for AMD. But at the same time, Intel is holding its weight in the 1% lows, and there should be more performance to be unlocked. If we had fast memory, what we are having here is 4100 at seal 16, which is an average overclock for Samsung BDI memory. There are some ones out there you can get 4200, seal 15, some can even get 4300, seal 15, and for those ones who are really, really lucky, you can get 4300, seal 14. So there is more performance to be unlocked here, really, and we have not even evaluated the Intel system with DDR5 yet. So it will be interesting to see if there's more performance to be unlocked. Now let's compare the results with the other YouTuber, 10 pound 42 who's also doing Star Citizen hardware comparisons. Now 10 pound 42 is using different settings and he's running very high with everything else at medium with no motion blur on and his run is slightly different. To see this run, you can see it in the background running right now, but as always, there are other videos that shows you the full run if you want to copy it in detail yourself and compare your results. When we're running at much lower settings, it becomes more of a CPU comparison whereby the GPU gets never fully utilized. So effectively the comparison is apples to apples in terms of comparing the CPU performance and RAM performance. My results are highlighted in blue and orange. Meanwhile, 10 pound 42's results are highlighted in green and red. When I was just editing my own results, Tempan42 published his 7900X3D review. So we're including his latest benchmarks in this graph. All right, taking a quick look at Tempan42's 7950X3D, we can see that when he disabled one of the chiplets, going from the full 16 core to the eight cores with only the V-cache, we can see he got roughly 9% performance improvement. On our side, if you recall, we got 7% improvement by disabling one of the chiplets that it didn't did not have the 3 v cache. So my results here, I'm only including that result. So what we're seeing here is the result for my 10 pound 42 run. And we're seeing that we have 96.4 FPS on the average. So it's just below his own system, which has eight cores, which is quite interesting. Now, one thing they all have in common is that the 1% lows is virtually the same. This is really, really interesting because when I was editing my video, I already had done this runs. I got the result. So very interesting to see that the 1% low is virtually the same, indicating that the methodology of copying his benchmark run works. <laughs> we shouldn't expect any, any variance here. So, so the results, in my opinion, is, is quite surprising. I'm actually expecting much higher frame rates from the 8-core chiplet. However, that was not the case. This could be a vary of factors. It could be a result of maybe not boosting all the way to 5.25 gigahertz. It could be different factors involved here. Why I didn't get that extra 10% above my results. But hey, this is the beginning of testing this chiplets to we'll see how this evolves when we have full CPU, the 7800X3D, how that will perform out of the box with plug and play settings. Now, what we see here, which is quite interesting as well, is that the 7900X3D that is fully tuned has a 12% lead on the 1% low amongst the non-tuned systems. And on the average, we're just looking at the 5% performance improvement comparing to the stock 7950X with one of the chiplets disabled. An additional observation is that the 7700X is a great CPU here as well and is actually also being held back by the memory speeds. So if those memory speeds were tuned to similar frequencies as my system of 6400 megahertz with tight 30 CL timings, I'm very confident the 1% lows would be similar and the average will increase as well. 
And my final argument is that the tuning of the 7900X with only six cores is actually limited to the fact that it only has six cores. I personally believe that the performance benefit of tuning an eight core with this kind of memory would actually be slightly higher than the result you're seeing here. And the reason why is because as we saw in the IDA results in the middle of the video, when you disable the other six cores, the read and copy results on IDA was reduced significantly, indicating that those CPUs are important and are necessary to push the RAM as well and request more information. So I have a theory that by adding those extra two cores, the performance would actually improve more and scale more by tuning the memory. But time will tell when the 7800X3D comes out how well it would scale with faster memory. In the meantime, we can speculate that the upper limit of the 7000 series with 3D cache is most likely 120 FPS on the average, which I predicted on my previous video. So what is the conclusion? Well, my conclusion is that this is by far the best CPU I have tested, but it's not the best CPU I believe is out there. And this is because of the limitations of how AMD decided to launch this 7900X3D with two chiplets with six core each. I think this is a big mistake. It's a premium CPU above the 7800X. It costs more money, but in theory will perform worse. Meanwhile, the 7950X3D is eight cores on each chiplet. It costs a little bit more, but at least you're getting those eight cores on the 3D cache C cluster that matters. So I would say it's a very awkward CPU. It's very clear that AMD wants to get rid of their stock of the chiplets with six cores on them. And what that means is that the unforeseen consumer will pick this up, believing that it is going to be the best CPU. If you're going is to be, have the best CPU, you would either need to get 7950X3D or the 7800X3D. I don't have those CPUs, but based on the architecture and design, I can confidently say this will be a better CPU without even having it. It's just on paper and in theory, a more superior CPU. So what does this mean for you? Well, if you pick up any of those two CPUs, there will not be a bone in your body saying that Star Citizen is unoptimized. Even if you're running this CPU straight out of the box, plug and play without tuning it, there might be a scenario, maybe if you're running at 5,600 megahertz, you might complain about the performance. But even then, I think you'll be very, very happy with the results and how Star Citizen performs overall with the CPU, at least for patch 3.17. My initial testing shows that patch 3.18, at least in the PTU, is performing worse than patch 1.17. So we'll see how this conclusion holds and how the 3D cache Ryzen 7000 series holds up as Star Citizen becomes a more and more complex game and as the developers try to optimize it. But in between now and then, remember, the only thing unoptimized is your PC.